Welcome to HR Tech Talks, a video series that goes behind the scenes with HR professionals to share valuable insights and best practices when selecting and implementing new software. I'm Dave Reitsema, founder and CEO of HR Payroll Systems, a free web service that makes finding the right HRIS and payroll software for your business a whole lot easier. In today's episode, I'm speaking with Norm Johnson, the HR manager at Golden Eagle Casino. Here's our discussion. So just to start off uh, very generally, tell me about a Golden Eagle Casino, how many employees you have, what were the big HR challenges that you were facing that you were hoping to um, alleviate through a new system? Sure. Uh, so Golden Eagle Casino is a casino located in Northeast Kansas. Uh, we've been here for about 24 years, I believe. Um, since 1996, so yeah, about 24 years. Uh, we have, when we're fully staffed, we have 150 employees. Of course, that fluctuates throughout the year uh, with sure. you know, any other variables that might impact that. Um, but really great company to work for, fun place to work. Uh, so far, I really enjoy working for a casino. Um, some of the HR challenges we've had uh, were, first of all, recruiting in a rural area that is yeah. uh, that presents certain challenges, right? Uh, having a smaller applicant pool to pull from, uh, but still needing all the employees you need to function is right. is an interesting challenge. Um, one was manually recording data, so we had pretty much everything saved in Excel sheets. Uh, that kind of led me on my path towards getting the HRIS that we got. Sure. Um, and then also the files that we had being only paper files was another difficult HR challenge. Okay. And I know you, you're saying that everything was being done manually and on spreadsheets. Um, how, how was that going? Um, I know it was certainly time consuming, but were you finding errors as well, um, you know, with reporting and that kind of thing? So luckily we weren't finding too many errors. The team that I have here is, is pretty good about making sure information is accurate sure. and accurately recorded. Um, but a lot of Excel sheets and a lot of really big Excel sheets. Okay. You know, you have to maintain data for so long after an employee leaves. So not only did we have data on the 150 or so employees that we have, uh, but we have data on all the employees that we've ever had for the last 24 years. Uh, so some of these Excel, Excel sheets can get uh, so big that they might take up to five minutes just to load and open on your wow. screen. Um, it's very time consuming to enter anything into those documents. And probably one of the biggest hurdles with that was only one person could do it at a time. Sure. So if my generalist was inputting information, the benefit specialist, the HR clerk, and myself were unable to do so. Uh, so oftentimes that would bog our day down quite a bit. Okay. So you didn't have an HR system. What about for payroll? Was that like through QuickBooks or something? How, how payroll, was that being handled? Payroll was done by our accounting department and okay. they were using uh, another system. Uh, okay. We decided to move that function towards HR. They're about the same time that we were looking for an HRIS. Okay. Got it. So the primary reasons behind implementing this new system, what would you say those were? Primary reasons would be uh, mainly efficiency, uh, but also the ability to have everyone working together at the same time, uh, which of course saves money in the end when we don't have people sitting around waiting for others to get done. Um, so efficiency, save time, save money, uh, and get everything organized in a way that makes sense. Sure. And you and I, in our initial discussion, we talked about uh, a return on investment and being able to sort of sell the investment of a new system to your executive team. Can you can you walk us through that process? How did you go about that? What what uh, suggestions would you give to other HR professionals who they also are sort of in that same process where everything's manual and it's not very efficient, um, but a new system is a new expense. So so walk us through how that went. How did you sort of quantify all of that? Sure. So. First of all, I had to calculate the hourly rate of my staff. How much is HR actually costing? Uh, and then I calculated the cost of the HRIS down to an hourly amount, uh, which of course I calculated that based on an eight hour workday. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's somewhat inefficient to calculate a system based on a 24 hour day when your team's only gonna use it for eight. So right. uh, I calculated that cost out. I ran standard ROI calculations, net present value calculations. Uh, and I was able to see that even if my team only saved one hour a day each by working in this HRIS, we still netted positive on this system. Wow. Um, so 
but even just on the cost savings alone, that freed us up for much more strategic initiatives. Now we're not waiting for an Excel sheet to load. We're not uh, waiting for someone else to get done with it so we can get into it. Now we're focusing on things like employee engagement, which we couldn't focus on as much before. Now we can focus on that more. Now we can focus more on recruiting. Now we can focus more on getting things organized and set and efficient. Sure, and also empowering employees to you know, view their own data or to make changes, uh, to view a paycheck, to make benefit elections, things that I'm sure were all happening very manually, very manually <laughs> prior yes. to the system. Yeah, um, I know that you've done multiple system implementations over the years, and I know through my experience in HR that each one's just a bit different. How was this one at Golden Eagle Casino different for you? Well, oddly enough, because we had everything saved on Excel sheets, it was actually easier because we already had everything pre-recorded. So when sure. we selected the HRIS that we did, we were given upload templates. So we had to take all of our information, put it into this Excel sheet, and then right. submit it and have it uploaded. Well, because we already had it in Excel sheets, all we had to do was change some of the cells around to look like what they wanted it to look like, and away we went. Uh -huh. uh, so in a way, that was preparation for us to make this move. We didn't have to create those sheets. Right. I remember in my own projects, those huge multi-column Excel spreadsheets um, and getting all those ready. And it's funny to hear that even though your process was manual, it made that easier because you didn't have to extract it from another source and you know manipulate the data for their, um, for their data structure. That's interesting. Uh, where did you start with this project? So you um, decided that this was super inefficient. Um, then, then what did you do? Did you make a list of your needs? I did, absolutely. I listed out my expectations for an HRIS system, mm -hmm. and I listed out my needs. So not only did I have my list of bare bones needs, I need point A, point B, point C, right. but I also had a list of, you know, if I'm going to pay for this, I also want to see these other things, right? Sure. So I had my expectations laid bare there. So I... I needed something that we could all be in at the same time, something that was going to load much faster, something that uh, I could access from one office or another if I was visiting another manager about their employees. I had to be able to use this system anywhere I went. Mm -hmm. um, those are needs. But my expectations for the system were that I had an integrated applicant tracking system or ATS. So I needed an integrated ATS, ability to pull reports so I can use data to make further decisions. Uh, I expected it to be user friendly, et cetera. So sure. I'm, I made that list, uh, and then I reached out to my network. Once, uh, once I kind of contacted everybody and got their opinions on what would work, I was able to lay those HRISs against my expectations and my needs and select from there. Right. So it was about making a list of your needs and your nice-to-haves, exactly. uh, which also were sort of kind of like needs because they were your expectations as well. Exactly. So would you say that you reached out to them asking for suggestions on like which systems to look at or how did you go about the system identification piece? Well, mainly through the social events of our, of our learning events that we have. So okay. we might have a training session, but it would be almost like a lunch and learn kind of thing. Right. Uh, so during the lunch portion, I'm talking with people at my table asking them, what HRIS do you use? What troubles did you have with that? Would you choose it again? You mm -hmm. know, you've had it for two, three years. Is it still worth it? Uh, is there something else out there that you know of that might be better? Uh, and I would converse with these people and, and get the information that I needed and go back and research more on my own. Sure. Interesting. And as far as implementation is concerned, there is sort of various phases. And, and I think one of the phases is preparing your organization for the change. How would you say that you prepped your, your organization for this change of not having a system to having a system? So... I'm sure you've heard communication is key, right? Well, yeah. that is absolutely true in this case as well. Uh, I communicated to the general manager and the other department managers and let them know that you know my team is gonna be taking some time away while we implement this new system. Uh, it, it's gonna seem like we are not as available as we were for a short time, so be ready for that. Uh, but making promises that we'd be even better and even faster when we got back up again. Um, I had to have all of the paper documents that I had scanned, uh, I had to have them all sorted, I had to have them all ready to go into this new HRIS. Uh, so uh, that alone took quite some time to get all of the paper documents for every employee we've ever had, uh, of course, within the retention guidelines, uh, scanned and ready and sorted and, and available to be put into the system. Right. 
yeah, it's a huge project, not one to be taken lightly, Absolutely. especially especially when you're going from that very manual process to a very automated one. It's com it's a completely different scenario. Um, how how long from from the point that you decided that it's time to make a change to actually implementing the system? About how long did that take from start to finish? It took about five months, I would say. Okay. So from the moment I said, we've got to do something different, and then through research, analysis, defining my needs, uh, scanning everything that we had, moving everything from Excel into the system, uh, all of that was about five months. Okay. And how many vendors did you look at during the process? I looked at at least 10, uh, if not more seriously looked at, uh, because there are obviously many more vendors than 10. Uh, so <laughs> I would look at vendors and if they didn't meet the things on my list, they're automatically disqualified. So I'm not even right. counting those. Uh, I'm only counting the ones that I looked at and said, these meet all of my needs. Now let's compare functionality. Sure. So probably 10, 11 vendors. Okay. And what would you say to people who, um, you know, they don't want to spend all that time researching vendors. They only want to, you know, look at two or three of the ones that everybody's familiar with, or they had used a prior company. How did it benefit you to go through the work of evaluating that many vendors? Well, I was able to, first of all, make sure they had what I needed. Sure. Uh, and, and I was able to make sure that was the one that I wanted. So the advice that I have for that is I've been there. I've been in a point where I needed to have a program or I needed to have a system so I could have a solution to a problem and I needed it now. Uh, so I made those hasty decisions. And let's just say I've learned from those because where I'm at today, I don't make those hasty decisions anymore. Taking the time is worth it. Uh, that extra two, three, four hours, extra phone calls you might make, extra websites you might have to look at only prove beneficial in the end when you've, when you've made that mistake before. Right, because at the end of the day, you as the HR professional own this project, whether it goes well or whether it does not go well. Absolutely. And so that's my advice is, take the extra time and really ensure that you're super confident about the, the software you're selecting because you're going to be married to them for a while, however yes. long that contract is. And even if you're not, even if your company says, you know what, let's make the switch. We'll pay whatever fee we have to pay to cut that off now, move to the new system. All, all is good. You come to a net zero there. Even if that's the case, your name is still on that your company is going to look back or your peers are going to look back and, and see that as a mistake that you made and you don't want that on your name. Sure. Absolutely. Um, in every process of implementation, you're, you're bound to experiences, uh, experience some bumps along the way. Um, what are some pitfalls that people should look out for when they're looking into a new system and implementing one? Look out for cost is that's the big one. Uh, you might see an advertised price and think, well, that's the best price I've seen so far, but that price is going to fluctuate. With these HRIS systems, most of them try to have a scalable solution for you. So they'll come in and say this costs, you know, $150 a month, which is ridiculously cheap for an HRIS. Mm -hmm. But then you come to find out that, that price scales up once you hit 20 employees, 30 employees, 40 employees. And now before you know it, you're paying $200 more a month than you were going to pay with another system because you didn't see the fine print. So sure. that's a big pitfall that can end up costing you money. Um, others would be making sure you're prepared because if you're not prepared, you might get this system and whereas it took me five months to implement this, it could have easily taken me a year, uh, 12 months or more if I wasn't prepared beforehand. Sure, so preparation and looking at the, looking into the minutia of, of this, this new system, being sure exactly. that you understand pricing, it's a, important. Uh, what would you say was the biggest success factor in your project? My network, by far. Having those people I could reach out to, having the people that I could talk to and ask questions, and bounce ideas off of. Uh, if I didn't have them, this, this could have taken me significantly longer and I'm, I likely would not have made the decision I did. Perfect, leveraging the network. That's a theme that I'm hearing consistently is you know, tapping into your network because they're going to tell you things that salespeople aren't. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and f as a final point, uh, for others who are considering making this change, what, what is the biggest piece of information or advice that you would give to them to make sure that this, this project is successful for them? 
the biggest piece of advice I would have is to be ready before you need to be. So if you are looking into this project now, start scanning documents now. If you don't already have information in Excel, start putting information in there like names, addresses, social security numbers, have a password protected uh, or on a private drive for your, for your company network. Um, but be ready so that you can upload all of this when you're ready to do it. So be ready before you need to be ready. Perfect. Great advice. Thank you so much, Norm, for meeting with us today and sharing your insights. Um, and I'm sure it's going to be super helpful to HR professionals who are in the same boat. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it.